Clutch kicks. Oh, a little bit of understeer. We got this now. Yep. Okay. Hello everybody, I'm Evil Rabbit. Torque Drift 2 has wheel support now in early access. So we're gonna take a look and test it here today. Make sure you guys follow me on all social media, all the description box below. Let's get to it. So of course you guys know that Torque Drift 2 is early access right now. So it is only limited to running like long beats and stuff like that, but we do have wheel support now. So we're gonna just see how this works. And actually, there's a decent amount of self-steer. That actually feels quite nice. Yep, there's a lot of self-steer. Of course, this game is probably going to get way better. Guaranteed it's going to get way better once we can tune cars and get some more power. Because I feel like that handbrake is definitely locking up the straight. We're very limited on how long we can really stay in drift with the cars. Because, well... They're being low powered and stock cars. Yeah, there's a lot of self steer. That actually feels quite nice. Let's see if we can actually get some uh, some solid drifts here. This is my Moza R12, and it did just kind of link in and start working. Yeah, so there's a lack of power that I'm noticing, obviously. So we're just going to see. Oh yeah, if we, oh jeez, if we had a little bit more power, we'd probably be way better. But here's what I want to do, I want to change this wheel. Just pull out the NRG wheel and see if we can do anything with the full 350 mil drift wheel. I just wish we had more power! Because that's exactly what is being the hindrance right now is the lack of power. Both butt kick. Just gotta stay on power. But I'm actually thoroughly impressed with how much self steer there is off the rip in this game. And I feel like once we get more power in the cars and stuff like that, this game is going to feel super good for the first impressions of wheel physics. Yep, see, if we had more power and we could stay more consistently on throttle, we'd be great. I can't wait. Oh! <laughs> I can't wait until we get access to, say, Odie Bakshi's car or Chris Forsberg's FD cars because then that's going to be way nicer. All right, so let's change up to Irwindale because we have a little bit more of a skid pad there with some codes and stuff we can do. So if you guys are trying this out, let me know what you guys think with wheel support. All I had to do was link my controls. So I'm going to show you that real quick just for sake of uh, reference because my R12 just worked right away. I didn't have to do anything, any changes or anything like that. All I did was go and go into my controls. It is under Xbox controller and I turned enable wheel sim on and then all I did was go onto the other side where you can't see because my monitor on the right side map wheel and map my controls. So let's go see. We're going to go down into the intersection. Oh, that, that, that clutch kick was kind of nice though. Yeah, once we get some more power and we're not just banging right off red line at all points of this track or in any gear, this game I feel is going to look and feel amazing. Let's see if we can just do a loop around here. Yep. There we go. Okay. Clutch kicks. Oh, a little bit of understeer. We got this now. Yep. Okay. I'm uh, 
very, very impressed. Oh, a little bit over. A little bit overzealous. I'm very impressed with the wheel and how it's feeling right now in this game, being early access. Self-steer is something uh, that a lot of games tend to miss when it comes to drifting. But I know the developers drive in real life and drift in real life, so they're trying to get a very solid feeling of the wheel. A little bit of understeer. Oh, we got this, though. Oh, that's too much. That's too much. We're going to go this way. I'm noticing a little bit of understeer in the car, though, but that's probably just lack there of power and the tuning aspect and not being able to hold the angle because of limited of power. So we're going to go do this a little second here. And break in. Yep. Okay. Torque Drift 2 is definitely on the right path with these wheel physics. If you guys have it, I would recommend giving it a shot. Let me know. Like I said, this is on my R12. Um, I would like, I'm probably going to try it on some other wheel bases and stuff like that. But my R12, my basic settings, this feels so nice. And I'm super impressed with, like I said, if we could just get rid of that understeer with a little bit more power. Look at that clutch kick flick in. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no. We ran out of power. Ah, that was so good, though. Definitely super happy with how this is going. And the way Torque Drift is uh, progressing with Torque Drift 2 in this early access stages. Oh. And uh, definitely expecting big things with this. Oh, I knew we weren't going to have enough power for that. <laughs> if you guys remember last episode, we didn't even have enough power in the uh, Z on a controller to keep really in drift. Oh, oh, that's better. Try really hard. Try flick entry with clutch kick. That's almost backy. So I think that's going to do it here. A little look at Torque Drift 2 wheel support and i'm super excited for more things to come and more updates because i know they are bringing some updates here in the next month with some uh maybe new cars new features and stuff like that Ooh, that we'll be able to use the game does look stunning as well because i did get a new graphics card so i'm running everything at much higher uh, quality and everything like that so look forward to some new higher quality stuff here on the channel so as always i thank you guys for coming back and watching i'm evil rabbit i'll see you guys on the track one more clutch kick for a good measure yup it feels good i can't wait to get more power and more cars oh just a tap nope wall drag wall drag oh that's not a wall drag <laughs>